Wildlife, the mere quintessence of our planet's life. These sentient creatures give vibrance and synergy to our planet, serving as its collective inhabitants. From birds to mammals, fish to amphibians, praise to predators, wildlife is the paint to Earth's palette. But we, the human race, haven't been merciful to them. For centuries, our kind has hunted swaths of them down for valor, glory, and fortune. Thousands upon thousands of these innocent creatures have been obliterated by our own hands. Many species have gone defunct because of us. If not by our swords, we've eradicated them through indirect attacks, indolent littering, wasteful use of electricity, deforestation, and human conflict. Because of these, a lot are going extinct by the day. We cannot let this continue. If we keep this up, we might not see eagles flying over the horizon, polar bears grazing the glaciers, koalas bellowing on the streets, or even pandas enjoying their bamboos. Our world will crumble. Sustainable living is a simple answer. Reduction of our carbon footprints is another. It is time for us to join hands and make a difference. Earth depends on us. We have to act for them and for us. Because if we need to know one thing, it's that wildlife is the mere quintessence of our planet's life. All right, GG3. First and foremost, I'm Marcius for those who are new. And today, we're going to be taking a look at this amazing map. This is actually a roller coaster ride. And this world's name is Extinction Safari, created by Minecraft Education Edition in association with the WWF or the World Wildlife Fund. And yes, I do have Minecraft Education Edition. And I'm actually excited to go begin this roller coaster journey with you guys so that we can be able to experience and learn more about the animals that have gone extinct over the past years. All right, let's go and uh, talk to this person. Hello. Welcome to Extinction, a biodiversity crisis. This project was developed in partnership with World Wildlife Fund. Explore this exciting new Minecraft world created by Nature Bites, as well as lessons designed to help you understand biodiversity and its importance to our planet's past and future. Onward. All right, so uh, this is gonna be amazing. Let's go to the scientist. Hello. Welcome to Extinction Minecraft Safari. You are now about to see some of the most charismatic species that have lived throughout human history but are no longer roaming the earth. Ride the roller coaster back through time and discover how different species have been lost forever. Ooh, all right, let's go. And I believe the minecarts are here. Let's begin this journey. Let's pop in. Let's go GG3. This is actually amazing guys. Take a look at this. The engineering and the world design made by Nature Bites is really just impressive. Wow. That's that's gonna be a mammoth right there to be honest. Okay, I think we're about to approach the first one. Let's actually take a look at what we have here. Oh, okay, that was such an amazing disembarkment. Alright, let's go. Let's take a look at what we have here. We have the saber-toothed cat. Ooh, okay. Let's go talk to the scientist. Hello, sir. 23 million to 10,000 years ago, the saber-toothed cat and other giant animals lived in the American grasslands. At the end of the Ice Age, the changing climate caused massive changes to the ecosystem. These changes and hunting by humans is believed to have caused the saber-toothed cat to go extinct. Oh man, that must have been so horrible. So yes, the Ice Age must have contributed a lot to the extinction of the saber-toothed cat and also human intervention as well. They've actually tried to recreate the saber-toothed cat using uh, this recreation right here. So that's amazing, guys. And ooh, this has to be the skull. Wow, 
That must have been so massive right there. All right, off we go to the next one. Let's go. Yo, guys, this is so cool. Take a look at that one, guys. Wow. The level of creativity and architecture is just astonishing. Ooh, we are approaching the next one, guys. All right, amazing disembarkment right there. We have here the Irish Elk. Guys, this is so humongous right there. Man, that's just amazing. Let's go talk to the scientist. Yo, man, how's it going? The Irish Elk was one of the most abundant deer that ever lived. Many scientists argue that factors like environmental change, virulent disease, and hunting by humans wiped out many large mammal species during the end of the European Ice Age, including the Irish elk. Ah, oh, yes indeed. So life happened and human intervention caused the unfortunate decline of the Irish elk. Oh. The Irish elk or Megaloceros giganteus. This is how its skeleton looks like. Oh, I, I love those antlers. And the restoration. Wow, this looks like Thranduil's stag from Lord of the Rings. Or, oh no, what was that? Oh, what's down here? Man, you gotta go appreciate the architecture they've got here. Let's go proceed to the next one, GG3. Whoop, let's go. And this is so amazing. Alrighty. I believe we're gonna be taking a look at the mammoth for this next stop. One of my personal favorite extinct animals. Yo, this is so amazing. Take a look at the horns right there. Wow, this skeleton build is just, oh, it's impressive. Okay, let's go. The woolly mammoth. Oh my, I'm too close, so oh, sorry. Too close for comfort. The woolly mammoth was a commonly found animal during the last ice age. Then 10,000 years ago, their numbers began to dwindle before eventually becoming extinct. Some believe that a poor habitat as a result of climate change, combined with increased hunting by humans, led to their extinction. Oh, so habitat and again, hunting by humans led to the death and eventual decline of the woolly mammoth. Look at how amazing this looks like. I wonder how big the woolly mammoth must have been. Man. The woolly mammoths near the Sami River AMNH mural. Ooh, these things look so amazing. By the way, there's a woolly mammoth leash in Grotopia if you guys play it. <laughs> uh, this is so cool. All right, let's go back to the minecart. Whoops, let's go. It's always slow here. <laughs> All right, another roller coaster trip. Ooh, this skeleton looks amazing as well. I wonder what animal this is. All right, so we got the moa. Ooh, all right, so that's what it's called. Hey, bro, let me go speak with you. The moa was a flightless bird endemic to New Zealand. It reached about 12 feet in height with neck outstretched and weighed about 230 kilograms. New Zealand had been isolated for 80 million years and had few predators before human arrival. Wow, that's interesting. All of the moa were soon driven to extinction between 1300 to 1440 by hunting. Ah, uh, another victim to human hunting, uh, the moa. Wow, what's this? Sir Richard Owen holding the first discovered moa fossil. Ooh, now that must have been a tall flight. This bird must have been taller than the penguins. A restoration of Dinoris robustus and Pachyornis elephantopus. Ooh, wow, so that's how the moas looked like back in the day. What's this? The animal lepteryx. Did he form his skeleton? Ooh, oh, they were able to recreate this well in Minecraft. Gotta give them that. Let's go and visit the next one. Gotta go appreciate the terrain over here, bro. A lot of work must have been placed here. Nature Bites, I gotta give this to you. Really, really fantastic job. Wow, this looks like a sea cow, if I'm not mistaken. All right, there we go. Wow, this, this looks amazing. What do we have here? The Stellar Sea Cow. Ooh, so I'm right. It's a sea cow. Stellar Sea Cow was a huge sea cow discovered in 1741. It was found in the Bering Sea between Alaska and Russia. It was quickly wiped out by fur traders and seal hunters for food and to collect its valuable fat. 27 years after it had been discovered, the species was extinct. Oh, that must have been so terrible, guys. Just 27 years after it has been discovered by the humans, did it become extinct. Oh, such a tragedy right there. The sea cow looks looks so quaint. No. No, guys. This is the 9025 reconstruction of Stellar. Oh, man. This is why trading, fur trading, and hunting should be minimalized. This is not good for the animals. Oh. The, sk the skull of a Stellar sea cow. Ooh. It looks so old already. Anyway. Man. 
seeing all these animals that we could have still seen today just horrid and sad you are approaching the next one this looks like a bird if i'm not mistaken let's see what this has in store Alrighty, we've got the great ox by john james audubon from the birds of america the great ox I don't know how to pronounce that. Is it ox or auk? Ox. All right. The great auk was very common in the North Atlantic. Around 1800, the species was under serious threat because of excessive hunting. The bird was large, meaty, and easy prey. The last pair were killed in 1844 and proves that uncontrolled hunting can wipe out the species in a short space of time. Wow. This is so... This is so sad, guys. Well, these guys looked like a mix of swans and penguins. I wonder how this would have looked today. Wow, they looked large. Giant auk eating a fish. Oh, wow. Let's see what they have here. S specimen number 39, skeleton and replica egg at Senckenberg Museum. Oh, wow. So that's how it looked like before. Man, the great ox. Another tragedy hit by humanity. Off we go to the next one. Wow, now this looks like a pony or a horse. I wonder what this is known as. Quagga. Ooh, that's quite an interesting name. The quagga was a plain zebra. Oh, wow, so it's another zebra that lived in South Africa until becoming extinct late in the 19th century, 1800s. The quagga's extinction is attributed to hunting and planned extermination. Now, this is just horrendous, man. Planned extermination, now that's just terrible, bro. Wild grass eating animals such as the quagga were perceived as competitors for the sheep and livestock. Oh man. Oh wow, that wow, this is actually an amazing animal. Look at how amazing this looks like. Uh, no wonder why people wanted to hunt the quagga back then. Such a shame we don't have this anymore. Oh, look at how beautiful this quagga looks like, guys. It's called the Aquas quagga quagga. It's an extinct subspecies of zebra. Now, if the zebra becomes extinct, that's going to be a tragedy as well. Spe specimen with passenger pigeon, but wow. This illustration is mega. This is so amazing. Samuel Daniel. All right. The quagga is one of my favorites so far. Let's go. I love that. Ooh, now that looks like a huge skull. Now I wonder what that is. Here we go. What do we have here? Tasmanian tiger scientist. Okay, so th th this is the this Tasmanian tiger. The thylacine, commonly known as the Tasmanian tiger, survived into the 1930s on the island of Tasmania. Notable factors led to its extinction, including comp competition, including competition, habitat loss, and extinction of prey. They were credited with numerous sheep attacks, which led to a call to control their numbers. Oh, okay. Now that's such a shame. They must have attacked sheep. This is John Gould's lithographic plate from Mammals of Australia. Wow. If you guys have not watched my wildfire awareness video from Grotopia, you guys better watch it. It's an amazing video. It teaches you about wildlife, wildfire awareness and how koalas are on the verge of being endangered. Unfortunate for the Tasmanian tigers. It's such a shame. Now, this is the thylacine. Last one photographed in 1933. Wow. Take a look at that, guys. This must have been a banger. Oh, credits. And we've got the analysis of the skeleton right here. Wow. Alrighty, let's go to the next one. Now take a look at this amazing skull figure right here, guys. That's a lot of Minecraft bones, fossils. Cool. Really cool. Ooh, now this has been the rhinoceros. The black rhino, if I'm not mistaken. Look at those blue eyes, so quaint. Here we are, guys. Yes, the black rhino. The western black rhino to be particular. The western black rhinoceros was a subspecies of the black rhinoceros. It lived in the savanna of sub-Saharan Africa. Poaching is partly responsible for bringing its species close to extinction, along with farmers killing rhinos to defend crops and trophy hunting. It was declared extinct in 2011. Oh, I remember reading this somewhere back then. Such a shame. Poaching is... It used to be a common common thing back in the past, and now it led to the extinction of the Western Black Rhinoceros. 
That's sad, guys. Oh, look at this. Oh, that looks so beautiful. The skull of a female black rhino. Just to think of how many animals have already been extinct over the past years, past decades, guys. Oh, now that, that horn looks amazing right there. Man. I mean, not gonna lie, this build is amazing. It gives us awareness on how many animals are already becoming extinct because of human actions, such as hunting, poaching, trophy hunting. Ah. Shame. Oh, this has to be the Galapagos turtle. If I'm not mistaken. I remember reading about this. The last one died just recently. Really much recently. Okay, let's see what we have here. We have the Pinta tortoise. Oh, <laughs> isn't it a turtle? It's actually a tortoise. My bad, guys. Pinta island tortoises used to be abundant in the Galapagos Islands. So I'm halfly correct. They were almost wiped out by sailors and pirates who hunted them in the 1800s and 1900s. After the hunting ceased, new animals introduced into the area overgrazed the lands until the tortoises lost their natural habitat. So this is a, a victim of AIS or alien invasive species. That's why overgrazing of um, alien species led to the extinction of the pinta tortoise. Oh, 1905 to 1906. Oh, look at how amazing that shit looks like. Oh, Lonesome George. Now that's the name. Lonesome George. The last Pinta Island tortoise. Oh, the moment that he died. That was just sad. I remember reading about this before. Such a shame. Oh, he used to be in the Charles Darwin Research Station. Look at how amazing Lonesome George is. This is for you, Lonesome George. They've built a good and amazing memorial for you. You know, this world is quite fascinating, and at the same time, it's it's enlightening to know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's go. Ah, all right. So here we are at the facility. I don't know how to. I don't know what this is called, but it's look. It looks like a research facility. Place used mine carts here. All right, no problem. Now we get to walk down this amazing walkway. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> wow, you gotta go take a look at this. Amazing architecture they've got here. Wow, I love those leaves right there. Complemented by the andesite and granite. Amazing, guys. And this is it, the entrance to the research facility. Oh, let's go talk to this person right here. Hello, welcome to the Biodiversity Lab. Explore all that you see. Each featured biome and endangered species presents a different aspect to the wonderful world of biodiversity. From the smallest level, genes, species, to ecosystems and biomes, and how we and all species are connected across the world. That is the concept of biodiversity. Let's go explore. Let's go begin with, oh, what's this? The snow leopard in harsh mountain ecosystem. Wow, look at that picture. I wonder how the photographer fared in this one. Siberian ibex, ibex, I don't know how to pronounce that, are prey species of the snow leopard. Wow, that looks like amazing. I love those horns, those antlers right there. Let's go visit the snow leopard. Wow, take a look at this, guys. Hey, ma'am, what's up? The mountain biome scientist. Snow leopards are top predators in mountains of Central Asia. An ecological niche refers to species placed in an ecosystem and the role it plays. They primarily hunt herbivores and play an important role in regulating and controlling overgrazing of alpine plants, which are important for other species. Okay, so let's, let's go take a look at these snow leopards. Amazing terrarium they've built here. Hello. Ah, look at them. Wow. These snow. They've actually gotten the... They replaced the skin of the ocelot in the game, but this is how the snow leopards look like. Take a look at how cute they are. Wow. Amazing, guys. So they live in the mountain biomes, and this is the snow leopard. What's up? How's it going? I'm Arceus. <laughs> this is so cool, guys. Amazing terrarium they've got here. Really, really amazing. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'll see you soon. And we've got... What do we have here? Hooked beak. Only turtle that feeds primarily on sponges. Maintain coral reef health. Oh wow, that view of the ocean scares me. Coral reefs have high biodiversity, more than 25% of all marine species in less than 1% of the ocean. Okay, wow, look at these, wow. Is that Nemo right there? Hey Nemo, 
If only there's a story. <laughs> Amazing coral reef they built here. Same goes over here. Wow. That's uh That's amazing. Really, really quaint. And here we go. The next terrarium we're gonna be visiting has to be the ocean or coral reef biome. Hey sir, how's it going? Ocean biome scientist. Ah, the hawksbill turtles. They help maintain a healthy coral reef and are a fundamental link to the maintenance and function of various species in coral reefs and seagrass beds. To understand similarities, the differences and relationships between living organisms, we classify and group them. A species is a group of similar organisms that can breed together. Okay, so uh, this is the ocean biome. Amazing, they got a little palm tree right here. Ah, the hawksbill turtle. Amazing, this looks so cute. I love the resource back in this one. Let's actually take a quick dive. Oh wow, look at this clownfish, guys. We're swimming with the turtles right now. Look at how amazing this is. Ooh, so cute, so cute. Oh wow, I love this view. Now this is a close look at the coral reefs with the ocean biome in Minecraft. That's it. Let's go proceed to the next one. And thank you, ma'am. It's a, it's a ma'am, sorry, I didn't know about that. And this has to be the polar bear. Yep. They are on top of the food chain, right there. And okay, this, this shows that the polar bears are the dominance in the in this food chain. Ooh, we're gonna go to the Arctic. Wow, amazing. Feels so cold right here. <laughs> Arctic biome scientist. Polar bears are at the top of the Arctic food chain. The flow of energy and food between species forms food chains. Trophic pyramids show how primary producers at the bottom of the pyramid, such as algae, produce energy that flows to the top of the pyramid to consumers such as the polar bear. Okay, oh, we got some cod right there. Ooh, ice is so slippery. Let's go and take a look at the nearest polar bear we can find. Ooh, hello. Look at these polar bears. So, so amazing. They're so cool. If we were in survival mode and they had like a young next to them, it's gonna be dangerous for us. These are the polar bears. They seem to be having a, a, a party right here for some reason. <laughs> All right, this is so amazing. I love this, uh, this terrarium and the cods are just peacefully swimming right there. And yes, I am a Filipino and this has to be one of my highlights for this video. This has to be the Philippine Eagle, one of my favorite animals of all time. The Philippine Eagle is the largest eagle in the world, one meter tall and over four kg. Wow. And they're actually endangered. 800, at least 800 of them left, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Sharp eyes, eight times distance of the human eye. Ooh, now this is amazing. This could be a huge, uh, their eyes are like a eight times scope in PUBG. They've got a hooked and powerful beak. Ooh, that beak looks so amazing, guys. Oh man, Philippine eagles are so cool. And yes, this has to be my favorite terrarium of the day, the forest. The Philippine eagle is a bird that hunts small mammals, fish, and other birds. Its physical and behavioral characteristics are example of species adaptations to environment. The Philippine eagle is a large bird, but its broad wings and squared off tail allow it to hunt effectively in the forest. So cool. Let's go enter this forest biome and let's take a look at the amazing Philippine eagles. Let's go. Guys, oh wow. Let's actually fly a bit here. Ooh, man. This has to be amazing. Take a look at this cute Philippine eagle, guys. And over here as well. Oh wow. You guys are so cool. If only we can do much more to preserve you guys. Definitely one of my favorite animals. And here we go. Amazing. Philippine eagles are so cool. Proud Pinoy, guys. Proud Pinoy. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Alright, that's it for the forest biome. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much, sir. Amazing. And perhaps one of the last ones here, we've got the Great Plains. They have a sea of rich grasses and wildflowers. Cool. Grassland diversity. This is a uh, diversity within and between grassland ecosystems. And here's a geographical map of grasslands. And let's go and take a look at this. The Plains Biomes Scientist. The grasslands of the Great Plains form an ecosystem. An ecosystem is the interaction of living things and non-living things in an environment. Many ecosystems can form a biome, which is a specific geographic area known for the plant and animal species living there. Cool. Let's enter. We've got here the bison, if I'm not mistaken. They live in the savanna or the plains biome. Cool. Look at this cute bison. They're actually cows if you're using uh, the spawn eggs. So yeah, this, uh, this world leases a resource back. 
amazing visit. Let's go and proceed to more areas. We've got here genes. Now what is this uh, geneticist? Genes contain the special codes that give individuals different characteristics or traits like eye color in humans. Genetic diversity within a single species creates all the distinct populations, traits, and adaptations like thousands of different breeds of dog. Genetic diversity makes every individual unique. Cool. This is so amazing, guys. And take a look at this diorama. Greater genetic diversity allows a species to adapt more readily to changes in its environment. Bison have been reduced to small populations and low genetic diversity. Lower genetic diversity means that they are at a greater risk of extinction through catastrophic events like a disease outbreak. Ooh, I see. That, that's an amazing diorama right there. And the deforestation zone, the final part of this video, I'm going to be showing you guys on how I'm going to be transforming this entire um, deforested biome into something sustainable. WWF Scientist Intro the forest is being destroyed. Orangutans are critically endangered and disappearing fast. Explore the forest and help us create a plan to manage the, the biodiversity. Let's build a sustainable future for the communities, the jungle, and the forest. That's right. Off we go to deforestation. Oh, wow. Oh, this looks so... Oh, I don't have the words for it, though. Oh, no, 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 no. No, deforestation, illegal logging, they've wrecked this forest. No, guys, no. This is such a shame. So what do we have here? Scientist. The five main threats by diversity loss are habitat loss, Environments are transformed for human needs. Invasive species spread outside their natural habitat that harm the native biodiversity. Pollution damages land and aquatic ecosystem. Climate change. Greenhouse gases change climate patterns. So these are the five threats to biodiversity. Habitat loss, invasive species, pollution, climate change, and greenhouse gases. So keep that in mind, kids. <laughs> what do we have here? We got a villager. The environment, including our community, benefits from ecosystem services like clean air, water, soil, food, and protect us from the seas and floods. The people need healthy and balanced ecosystems to supply us with these essential requirements. This has to be a little bit of a uh, living house right here. Here's a scientist. Sustainable management of ecosystem will ensure the long-term benefits for people and the... Sustainable management of ecosystems will ensure the long-term benefits for people and the planet. But we take too much much more than being naturally replaced. We need two whole planets to support the population at their current rate of consumption. That's right, guys. We need to be much more sustainable because our resources will now be depleted because of our own actions and everything. Without the forest habitat, the orangutans and other species will disappear. The communities will have to move on too as we have no more natural resources. The forest has been destroyed. More has been taken that can be naturally replaced. It is important to manage ecosystems carefully. Loss of biodiversity and overexploitation reduces an ecosystem's ability to produce the resources nature and people need. Can you help us create a sustainable future for the jungle? Yes, indeed, we can do that in just a bit. And lastly, the farmer. People blame me for cutting down the forest. I'm just trying to earn some money to give my family a happy and healthy life. I need better options to survive from the land. Now this is where sustainable development and sustainable living comes into play. Now if you take a look at this whole new thing, this whole deforested land, guys, it's I know it's virtual but it's it's horrendous and painful to look at. To think that this is actually happening in the real world. We need to do something. And what we're going to do about this is that we're going to be transforming this whole thing into what could be a sustainable ecosystem where humans and animals can peacefully live together let's do this all right guys welcome 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 i'm finally done doing some creations around this previously deforested area if you guys could remember earlier from the prologue up to the documentary part of the video this used to be a whole plain of pure deforested land and now i was able to transform it into something much more sustainable and environmentally friendly as well 
I'm actually excited to go and take a look at what we have here today. This quaint and sustainable little village that I have created over here. Now, first and foremost, all the way from the facility right there that we visited earlier, we've got this huge trail. And if you, could, if you guys could remember, it used to be pure wasteland and deforested land. I was able to transform it. And wow, take a look at this. I have actually just planted saplings, spruce actually, because I wanted to go and convey a good, nice forest over here. We've got this little fence arc. And by the way, I did not use any torch in this build. As you can see, all the materials are used to, I used here are basically sustainable and eco-friendly materials so there's no fire involved we've got redstone lamps and the reason why i built this kind of ecosystem is because i want uh, this this little it's supposed to be the philippine eagle failed uh, render right there this is supposed to be a little environment that i made that would show on how humans and the philippine eagle can survive in one ecosystem now let's actually go begin over here now i did not use your standard house i actually use what we call a home capsule that's right so it's basically a small portable house as you can see by this antenna right here it's the same as for every single house that you see in this amazing area and we've got a little bit of a farm right here and also a farm in the back for food i don't have any livestock as well because i wanted to go foster a a great environment to be honest and let's go down here let's go and visit this capsule we have nothing inside because it's plain that we can put a bed and other chests and other materials over here if you want to but this is a simple look of a sustainable home capsule it's complete with greens and crops as well for sustainable living now let's continue on i used here spruce trees because it conveys the idea of a forest where the philippine eagle resides on now the thing is over here the Philippine eagle needs to survive in an ecosystem where it can feast on its prey and the prey can feast as well. So the Philippine eagle is known for eating monkeys, that's why it's known as the monkey eating eagle. So I had to go put some jungle trees right here so that this is where the monkeys or in this case the orangutans as you can see over here would stay and the eagles would just pierce and eat on them <laughs> for some reason the, the render for this orangutan is is weird you still have this golden sword right there okay let's continue on we've got this little pond now guys this is filled with fish of course tropical fish right here and we've got oh for some reason we've got this guy right here and a Philippine eagle right there we've also got some boats so that the kids can be oh no what happened here wow so we got some boats over here so that the kids can play through and this little pond has greens as well yes I want to go foster the idea of life below water that is one of the United Nations sustainable development goals and we've got here a water purifier two actually so that we can be able to foster clean water and sanitation which is the second United Nations sustainable development goal that we've added in this build okay next also we have the zero hunger that's why each house uh, well not every house but most houses here most capsules have their own sources of crops so that there will be no hunger in this place and this also complements the next one which is the good health and well-being as the next united nations a sustainable development goal we've got some plants on top as well because we'd like to decorate our capsules with much more flora because that's beautiful and we've got this little archway right here by the way i built everything on creative mode and it was only me that built this unfortunately so it would have been nice if i had some friends and we've got this lamp post remember nothing here is built of non-sustainable materials i had to actually choose sustainable materials in the game such as smooth stone because this is natural we've got iron because it's a natural mineral we've got glass and we've got iron bars here as well amazing i didn't use wood well i would i could have used wood for the houses but i want to make it some some sort of a durable and sustainable at the same time we've got this guy right here enjoying his time with a philippine eagle so the, the idea here is actually to be able to create an ecosystem where the philippine eagle and the human 
can exist together as one. There we go. Oh, we got actually a flip eagle right here. How are you doing, man? You okay? Now, this is actually my ideal view. I want I want an environment like this where animals and humans can live together with in peace. So this is the idea I've made over here. We've got more capsules right here. Another pond. Yes. Now this pond is amazing you guys have to go and take a look at how cute these tropical fish are Ooh, let's actually go pop me to one of the boats take a look at this amazing oh wow it's so fun to go and just explore this pond and seeing all these tranquil fishes over here remember everybody i have built this village in accordance i mean in accordance to 10 united nations sustainable development goals the next one is no poverty now in this mini environment, I wanted to go make sure everybody living here is in a safe and stable state. So uh, these are scientists, farmers, basically the same people we saw earlier. Although uh, I just had to revamp everything from the previous one and try to go make it much more sustainable. So if we go and um, go on top, we can see and how amazing this looks in the sky. And I, I know it's quite small, but it does the trick. We can actually see the Philippine Eagle and the humans living together in peace so amazing the next un sustainable development goal has to be life on land now this is quite a no-brainer this uh, this entire place right here is built on land which is quite cool actually the next one is affordable and clean energy now everything you see here is sustainable as you can tell and nothing here is i mean i wouldn't say too much mechanical but this um, no facility here uses chimneys or anything that would endanger the environment everything here is eco-friendly that's the thing i wanted to do here guys as you can see by the hashtag on this video the next is climate action since it's able to facilitate quite a good climate in this biome right here pretty much a tropical forest with a combination of some jungle trees so that these orangutans aka monkeys can can stay and the eagles can feast on them because why not that'll be so nice then we've got responsible consumption everything here is quite subjective to say but if the humans the npcs living here would exercise proper consumption of their resources then that will be great for this united nations sustainable development goal and lastly number 10 we've got a sustainable community and i think that is the highlight of this entire village over here we've got home capsules and we've got greens plants flowers everything to make it sustainable the materials i used here are um are recyclable and renewable resources and the smooth stone is actually a product of the earth so it is natural and it is indeed sustainable we can actually recreate that we got trees of course i'm so happy about this build guys i might show a tutorial in the future on how to make a sustainable environment in minecraft I might actually show you how to create this step by step and i definitely love this guys this is really amazing those are the 10 things that i was able to incorporate in this build and i do hope you guys were able to enjoy it nonetheless including the prologue and the documentary of the animals earlier in this video this was such an amazing video i know it's quite long i think i'm um, 40 minutes long but i think it's worth it for your time for you to learn new things through minecraft education edition and so people what was your favorite animal from this video? Let me know in the comments below and make sure that you put the hashtag save the animals together with a comment that you'll be placing. There won't be any reward in this one, but I would love to see if you guys could think of an amazing comment describing your favorite animal in this video and together with the hashtag save the animals and just basically describe and tell us a story on how you would like to see the world with that animal peacefully living on this planet so let's go anyway so that's it for this video people i know it's quite long but i really enjoyed this and it's my first minecraft video in quite a while my name is arceus the gg3 guildmaster and it's been an honor being with you guys today please subscribe for more videos like this and always remember that gg3 for life gaming for the planet